Hey guys, welcome to the next installment on this Admiral TV restoration project. Hopefully, we'll be wrapping up the recap. I wanted to touch on a couple things. Thank you for the feedback on the last installment where I tried doing split screen using two cameras. I'm glad you liked the results. What I wanted to do was pass on a tip or two that I got from the viewers. One of them uh, is with, with regards to my difficulty in locating a component on the back side. So uh, the tip I got was to shine a bright light through the top side. So yes, indeed, that does help. So for example, I know there's another cap that needs to get replaced down around here. So I've got one of these cheapo floodlights from Home Depot. Cost, I don't know, three, four bucks. 60 watt bulb in there. That's what I use for a lot of my lighting. I've got a number of these uh, overhead in the shop in various places. You can clip them on to just about anything. And I have plenty of exposed uh, floor joists here. Very convenient. And right now I just got one up on the workbench. So we want to locate this cap on the other side. So got my finger on it there and we shine light through. And there's my finger, there's the cap, so it has got to be, let's see, I've got the camera in there. So there's my finger, so this is the cap. Alright, there. You can see the dark shadow of it right here. That dark circle there is the cap, so that must be one lead here. And the other lead there, so thank you for that tip. Another one, uh, another guy mentioned putting a black marker dot on the side of the board near the component. That would also be a good technique to use. Um, something else I noticed while reviewing the video has to do with this. You can kind of see it coming through from the other side. 6AL5, and what looks to be traces for a tube socket. Just like over here for this 6AW8. However, there is no tube here. Let's take a look at the other side. So this chassis went through a ton of revisions. These are a lot of different models for a number of years. Uh, in fact, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is run 19. I don't know how many more there were after this. But there were 18 prior to this. Well, at some point they went from a 6AL5, which is a little miniature dual diode to this guy which is a dual selenium rectifier and I'm pretty sure that is for the horizontal lock circuit the uh, phase detector so I should uh, be replacing that guy those tend to kind of go bad over time so I'll show you what I replace that with when I get to it. A couple more caps down here I want to replace. There's a black guy I was just looking at I want to replace. Electrolytic here, I believe that is the ratio detector for the sound. Replace that guy. And a couple more of these vertically mounted, possibly paper caps, possibly plastic film. I don't want to spend the time to test them. Much easier to just take them on and replace them. And then there's this guy I've touched on a couple times. So we've got the stump of what looks to be a, a resistor that blew out, completely failed. And they lassoed one end of it here with the replacement. And the other end is kind of jammed in there. Which tells me that they replaced this from the top side. And well, that's what it kind of looks like when you try replacing it from the top side. You get in there as best you can and jam the part in there as best you can. So this one's wrapped around and soldered on to the remains. The other one is jammed in next to a component that I think tack soldered onto the side of another resistor. So, uh, I want to figure out where was the original component. It looks kind of darkened down in here. So I'm thinking maybe one end went here and the other one went maybe here, something like that. I will refer to the schematic and try to figure it out. I'll see at some point there was a tube socket up here, which is now apparently no longer necessary. Kind of odd. And I see there's another cap down here. So basically I need to recap this board and a little bit of work on this board and I think that's it. 
and I believe I have one or two suctions on the electrolytics back here. Yeah, that that needs to be. Uh, oops, camera died. That's what I get for talking so much. Ah, uh, where was I? Oh yes. I need to insulate this off. I clipped this off of the lug and I relocated the cap over here. I've got a couple more sections to replace on this guy. Double check uh, some resistors and uh, that's about it. Another tip I have for you is dealing with these wires. Pretty common to 50s TVs is to encounter wires that have very sticky residue on them. It attracts tons of dirt, and while you're working on them, it gets pretty annoying because it gets all over your hands. Um, I try to clean it off with the mildest solvents I can, which would be like isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol. Acetone works great, takes the stuff right off, but damages the plastic. So this is denatured alcohol. Basically like booze, grain alcohol. And it works really, really well. And is not an aggressive solvent, so will not damage the plastic insulation. So, if you want to be really OCD and tedious about it, use a Q-tip. <laughs> or just grab a wad of paper towels. And soak it in some denatured alcohol. It's cheap stuff. And just wipe down all the wiring harness at once. No big deal if you slop it around. The stuff evaporates. doesn't cause any harm. And now I can touch these wires and no more stickiness. Eventually, I imagine it will return. I mean, the stickiness uh, comes from, at least I believe it comes from, the plastic decomposing over the decades. I don't know exactly what kind of plastic this is. I don't think it's PVC though, like modern wires use. Whatever it is, I think some substance comes out of them over the years. Yeah, at any rate, I've done this on sets. Probably the oldest one was maybe 10 years ago, and I haven't noticed any issue with the wires yet. There we go, nice and clean. No more stickiness. I removed that resistor that was just kind of tacked on top of the circuit board, and it didn't take too long to track it down on the schematic, because as is often the case, the 1 and 2 watt resistors are clearly designated and the assumption is that if it doesn't say one or two or three watts that it's a half watt. So that is the only 470 ohm two watt and when I traced it out I saw that it was tacked in to this resistor down here on the top side of the board which just happens to go over to this lug which is where the other end of the blown apart resistor was attached. So I dug out a replacement that's rated for 3 watts and I'm going to put it into the original mounting holes. So pretty much all I've got left now is last few electrolytics. So for example Let's take a look at this guy. I still have two sections of this three section cap wired in. So right now I want to see about replacing this one. And traditionally one technique would be to install a terminal strip nearby, remove the leads from this can, relocate them to the terminal strip and mount the caps there. Could do that, although things are a little tight here. Or I could restuff the can. That's a lot of work. Potentially, uh, there are one or two outfits that make new cans 
that um, I think really what they do is they take individual electrolytic capacitors and put them inside the can and then seal it up. Um, those are quite expensive and you don't really know what caps they used inside, so I'm not too keen on those. Which leads me to a technique I'm using, I've been using in this set and I've used in uh, Predictas, which is to relocate the caps to a more convenient spot. If it was a really rare set or critical wiring, I would not do that, but for something like this, uh, in this case, it's actually going to be a bit of an improvement. So, let's look at this section right here. There's only one wire going to it. Yellow wire. Now that I've cleaned off the crud, we can see the colors more clearly. And it goes right to here. That's it. Wire just going from this cap to this point on the circuit board. Which goes to a resistor and pin on the tube. And I can see through the light shining through from the other side, if I read this backwards, it's a 6AW8. And if we count the pins clockwise, starting for the key here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So let's look on the schematic. 6AW8, pin 8, two things, resistor, capacitor. So that is that cap. It's all it goes to, nothing else. So what I mean by an improvement, wires have a little bit of resistance, they've got inductance, they can pick up noise. So ideally you'd actually want this cap to be as close to where it's being used as possible. So by relocating it from here, or somewhere over to here, actually improving things. Furthermore, I was poking around on the circuit board, I noticed in other areas there were extra holes. And lo and behold, we've got an unused hole right here. So that'd be the positive side of the cap. And the only problem I've got right now is the negative side of the cap needs to get ground. All around the circuit board, there is a copper trace that's grounded. And where they've secured it with these screws, they actually Put a solder blob on there and soldered the screws right in and it's going to the chassis. So we're surrounded by ground. But unfortunately I don't have a good ground going through a hole on the circuit board. Kind of stinks. This is the closest ground right here going through this. So, and this here and here, these are tabs that hold the tube socket in. So the best I can do the other side of the board, it's pretty empty right here, is to put the positive lead there and run the negative lead through here. So that's what I'm going to try doing. It's only a 5 microfarad cap, so it's going to be a pretty small cap. And um, some others I relocated, on uh, this case on a terminal strip that was already existing, conveniently. Um, this guy, also a terminal strip that was already there. And same with this guy up here. So I got pretty lucky with this set, with the electrolytics. So, I've, uh, so far, I uh, found a good place to mount all of them. And I think that orange one there is the last one. The one that was a little ugly was this guy. I clipped it off and actually mounted the cap over here. So I had a convenient terminal strip to mount it on. But I had to clip it off the lug, which left three wires kind of hanging in space. So I'm going to put heat shrink tubing around that and make sure it's well insulated. I just don't have a uh, convenient tie point around here. And here's the cap mounted on the board. So there's that one free hole I found. And the negative side going through a slot in the circuit board that holds the tube socket in place. It's not near any other components, nothing that's going to get hot. So I think that is a very sensible thing to do. And on the other side, I will simply cut off the wire going to the circuit board. Now, the one potential downside to this approach is that 10, 20, 50 years down the road, somebody else might be re-restoring this TV 
and the original service info and they might be a little confused as to how things got rewired but I like to think if somebody can read a schematic shouldn't take them too long to realize that the cap was moved over here and it is wired in properly and it makes sense alrighty last cap installed right here tracing it over here is where I cut it off the lug of the electrolytic I snipped it off the cap cleaned off any sharp burrs put it inside some heat shrink same with this same with this I'll tie those down a little bit more securely and that is it for the major recapping I'm gonna fire this up now again see how it works and then final thing I want to do is go through and check all the resistors especially ones like this that are kind of darkened and cruddy looking which to me says it's been overheating